If you consider yourself on the lazy side, or you love shortcuts, then finding the nth term is for you. So, let's say you were posed with a question that you had the sequence 4, 10, 16, and 22, and someone wanted to know what was the 100th term. Now, one way to do that would be to figure out how much um, the sequence is going up by each time, and then keep adding that number until you get to the 100th term. Now, that would certainly work, but it's not very efficient. It would take a very long time. So now we're going to look at another way to do that, and that's by coming up with a formula. So the first step in finding the nth term, or coming up with a formula for a sequence, is to make a table. So I use the same numbers uh, that I had in the previous slide, except now I have them in a nice organized table, and each number is under what term that number is in the sequence. So for example, 4 was the first term, so it's under 1, 10 was the second, so it's under 2, 16 was the third, and so on. Once you have a table, you want to look for a common difference. So that means figure out what you need to add or subtract to a term in the sequence to find the next one. So if you look at number 4, you need to add 6 to get to 10. And then you need to add 6 to 10 to get to 16, and then 6 to 16 to get to 22. So now we can use inductive reasoning to make a conjecture that this sequence goes up by 6 every time, which means that this is an arithmetic sequence. And an arithmetic sequence is just one where the number goes up by the same number each time. So you just keep adding the same number. If a sequence is not arithmetic, then you can't do what I'm about to teach you. So uh, another way, instead of just keep um, adding 6 to the previous number, uh, another way you could do that is to just keep multiplying 6 by a number. So if you have to add 6 once, it would be 6 times 1. If you have to add 6 twice, then it's 6 times 2, uh, 3 times, 6 times 3, and so on. So right here is where our formula is at right now, but we're not done. The next step in writing a formula for the nth term is to figure out what you need to add or subtract to your formula so that it works. So for example, right now our formula is f of n equals 6 times n. Now, in the first term, when n equals 1, we get that 6 times 1 is equal to 6. So, what do we need to add or subtract to 6 to get that first term? Well, we could just subtract 2 to get to 4. So right now, we have 6 times minus 2 is 4. In the next term, so the second term, where n equals 2, we have 6 times 2, and that's going to give us 12. Well, what do we have to subtract from 12 to get to the next term, right here, 10? Well, that would be 2 again. So 12 minus 2 is 10. So now, it looks like every time, we just need to subtract 2, as you can see right here, from 6n to figure out that specific term in our sequence. So right now our formula stands at f of n equals 6 times n minus 2. So we're pretty much done. Now we just need to use this formula to figure out what the 100th term is. So remember our formula was 6n <clears throat> minus 2. And it's always good to check to make sure that it works for the other numbers, too. So the third term is 16. If we were to plug in 3 for n, we would have 6 times 3 minus 2, which would be 18 minus 2, which is 16. So it works. So if I wanted to find the 100th term, then I would plug in 100 in for n. Because remember, n represents what term you're on. So you would get 6 times 100 minus 2, which would be 600 minus 2. So you would get for your 100th term is 598. See, wasn't that a whole lot easier than adding 6 10, uh, 100 times? Now, I would like you to try one on your own. So, in this next example, I want you to come up with a formula and then try to use it to predict the 100th term. So, pause your video, try it, and then hit play when you want to see how you did. Okay, now, in the previous example, to go from one term to the next, we had to add 6 each time. Well, we're not always going to add. You can also, 
the sequence could also be going down, which means we're subtracting the same number each time. So in this specific example, to go from term 1 to term 2 to a negative 3, you have to subtract 5. To go from negative 3 to negative 8, you have to also subtract 5. And then from negative 8 to negative 13, subtract 5 again. So, thankfully, this sequence is arithmetic, so we can come up with a formula. So, right now, our formula is negative 5 times n. So now, we just need to figure out what to add or subtract to the formula each time so that it works. So, since the first term is 2, we need to figure out what we need to add to negative 5 to get 2. So, negative 5 plus 7 is 2. So, that seems to be the number that we need to add to our formula so that it works. And you could try in the other examples too. In the second term, um, we would have negative 5 times negative, I'm sorry, negative 5 times 2, which would give us negative 10. And then negative 10 plus 7 is also negative 3. So now our formula is f of n equals negative 5 times n plus 7. So if we wanted to figure out the 100th term, we would just plug in 100 in for n. So we would get negative 5 time, oops, times 100 plus 7. So negative 5 times 100 is negative 500 plus 7 would give us negative 493. So that's our answer. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, Rewatch it again if you still don't get it. And have a good one.